Hi everybody, Scotty here for Scotty's Take That Info with my co-host Cletus and my main man, Mr. Nicky the Nose Tesla. Uh, today's video is about uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and various cryptocurrencies. Now, uh, various people have asked me in recent months, uh, why don't I make a video or write an article about cryptocurrencies? Do I think it's a good idea? Should they invest? Should they build a giant mining computer with super powerful graphics cards and, you know, this kind of stuff? And I responded and I said, well, you know, gee, I, I don't really have enough technical knowledge about the, the, under, the underlying, you know, the inner workings of, of cryptocurrencies and everything to actually say, I don't, I don't know enough about all that to actually say anything intelligent. But after a while, I realized, you know, thinking about it, I realized that uh, actually that's exactly the reason I should make a video about it. What on earth do I mean? Well, um, in recent times, we have uh, seen that uh, the value of Bitcoin has skyrocketed and the value of uh, an Ether, the unit of Ethereum, has also skyrocketed. And uh, there have been you know, rumors of there was a dude who in one month made $200 million with Ethereum. And there was an article on, I think it was RT, saying, you know, if you had invested $100 in Bitcoin when it first launched in 2009, that would be worth like $72 gajillion today. <sighs> right, so there's a lot of hype because the value has skyrocketed. Suddenly, it's like everyone wants to jump on the bandwagon, and of course, the media is talking about this as if it's like, you know, cryptocurrencies are like the super investment of the future. Um, actually, it reminds me a lot of the whole dot-com investment bubble, where basically you were a, uh, some website that sold, like, you know, hand-woven baskets, and you had an IPO, and suddenly, you know, your company was worth $6 billion, and, you know, you, you weren't even making a profit, and everyone is buying the stock like mad, and it was crazy. Um, so I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of hype and almost hysteria going on about uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, that's always kind of a bad sign when you read articles like, if you had invested $100, then you would be a multimillionaire. Because it's like saying, well, if you had given... <laughs> it's like if you had given or invested, you know, a hundred dollars in Mark Zuckerberg when he was still at university and created a, a Facebook, that uh, today, you know, you would be a multi-billionaire and you'd have your own yacht. Well, yeah, you would have to know that Facebook was going to become popular, and you would be, you know, you could you could make bets like that and invest a hundred dollars on hundreds or thousands of companies before you would ever strike gold with it, you know. Uh, unless you had some kind of inside information or unless you were a part of it and working really hard to make it happen or, you know, I mean, that's kind of, that's iffy. That's obviously sort of like hype, kind of, it's, it's hype, basically. Um, so that's a little worrying. To top it off, there's an article recently on uh, techspot.com from July 21st, 2017, entitled, For the Second Time This Week, Hackers Steal Ethereum Cryptocurrency Worth Millions of Dollars. So, blah, 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 uh, hackers have managed to steal millions of dollars worth of digital currency, Ethereum. Uh, around 153,000 Ether worth about four, $34 million was taken from three separate multi-signature wallets. Uh, it was a vulnerability in parity wallets variant of the standard multi-sig contract. Doesn't that sound fancy? Uh, but it's okay, because even though $34 million is... Uh, a lot of money, it could have been even higher were it not for the quick thinking of some white hat hackers. They were able to, I assume, use the same vulnerability to basically steal uh, over 337,000 Ether, worth more than $85 million, by siphoning, siphoning it from other wallets. And, of course, this white hat, ha white hat hacker group has promised to return the funds to the rightful owners once it creates a new multi-sig with the same settings for each individual minus the vulnerability. Right, and then it says, earlier in the week on Monday, hackers stole around $10.3 million of Ethereum from Coindash by simply replacing the wallet address listed on its website with one belonging to the perpetrators. Um, this kind of gets back to my whole there is no online security video because um, no matter how great 
blockchain technology is and no matter how great the you know the cryptography and cryptocurrencies actually are you have this sort of surrounding infrastructure that's making it go um and by the way there are at, at this point uh there are over 1000 cryptocurrencies out there in circulation of course bitcoin is the most popular ethereum is the second and so on uh, but there are over 1000 different ones and um all of these systems have code that's written by people that are doing things like, you know, multi-signature wallets and, you know, exchanges and blah, blah, blah. And, of course, you can set things up and kind of do it yourself, but that requires a lot of technical knowledge, and that's not what most people are doing. So there are vulnerabilities like this. Um, there was also recently, uh, actually, I think it was a little while ago, there was a, uh, I think it was some kind of Bitcoin exchange or something where basically they went belly up. And when they went belly up, they just kind of took everybody's Bitcoins with them and, you know, rode off into the sunset. And it was like, bye. And you're going, wait, I thought that wasn't supposed to be possible. Was What what happened there? And it's it's like, it's a little bit like the Wild West, you know. Um, even if blockchain technology is cool, and it is very cool, um, even if the cryptography is great and supposedly requires like a D-wave quantum computer to crack and, you know, let's hope um it's like the actual implementation of it and the people involved in impl implementing all this stuff for you to use basically uh unless you have all kinds of technical knowledge um it's not very good i mean that's some pretty good evidence right there so yeah you have the lack of security you have um a lot of hype in you know invest a hundred dollars and you could be a multimillionaire. oh this dude made 200 million in one month on Ethereum, it's an investment, it's an investment. If it's an investment, it's an extremely risky one. Um, and uh, on top of that, I mean, it's like you might as well just play the stock market and just pick some, some, some volatile stock and like hope you get rich. Um, I don't think it's somewhere where you actually want to invest copious amounts of, of time and energy and especially money in the hopes of getting rich quick because it is still a very wild west sort of early days of the internet type of, of technology um, I know there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of, of talk about you know it's the, the whole point is that like it's about like transparency and and it's like distributed it's decentralized it's like you know screw the man kind of thing, you know, well, now banks are getting involved in it and blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, it's a little bit like the internet back in the 1990s, you know, back in the nineties, it was, the internet was basically, you, you could read and consume content, but there was no interactivity. Um, and you know, Netscape Navigator was the browser of choice. Um, do you use Netscape Navigator today? Of course not. You probably use Chrome. Uh, over half of all internet users today use Chrome. Some people use Firefox, Safari, Opera, whatever. But the point is that, you know, Netscape is like, who? Um, the internet has changed a lot. And of course, back before Web 2.0 came out, it's like, Web 2.0 is like the future. It's like, um, it's going to be interactive, fully interactive. It's going to be like, a, the internet's like free sharing of information and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, fast forward to today, that's exactly what we have. I mean, the fact that you're watching this YouTube video right now, you're getting this for free. Um, so, yeah, if, if you think I'm a moron, you can't, uh, you can't yell at me because I'm giving it to you for free. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's free, right? I mean, if I wanted to, I could make a whole series of YouTube videos explaining how to design a microprocessor, right? You wouldn't even have to go to university. I can make all kinds of videos and explain all the math and all the physics and all the chemistry and all this stuff and step-by-step, step, blah, 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 and give you for free an entire university-level electrical engineering course on how to design a microprocessor. But I'm not going to do that because that's crazy, because it would require so much time and energy and money on my part to make all that that, of course, I'm not going to do it. So sure, there is free information, far more so than there was before, but... It's not like this wonderful, you know, uh, utopia, this online information utopia. And on top of it, you have the problem of, you know, Big Brother is watching and the NSA is spying on you, the CIA is spying on you, Google storing your information forever, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it comes with, with, you know, 
there are benefits and there are also consequences. There are also problems. Um, so I think that's essentially because people are saying that blockchain technology is going to be Web 3.0, and there's a lot of hype in, in that area as well, just as there was hype with, like, Web 2.0 is going to be super interactive and free information. I kind of doubt that Web 3.0 is going to be like, blockchain will be everything. It's going to be super awesome. That's kind of like a very overly idealistic view. Uh, I think blockchain and cryptocurrencies will have a place to play, but um, there are a lot of other factors that are going to come in. Um, for example, vulnerabilities, and once the hype dies down, what's the reality? What's the killer app that really um, uses blockchain technology to be uh, to do something that people find very useful. Um, yeah. And then, of course, you're going to have all the other not-so-good stuff. And, yeah. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I just wanted to kind of go over a few of those things and say, like, yeah, um, as an investment, not so good. Um, I do think the, you know, blockchain is very cool. Um, how it's actually going to be you know, how it's all going to play out, that remains to be seen. So, um, you know, keep your wits about you, whatever, and uh, be careful. So, right. Uh, leave some comments below if you have any questions, comments, rants, whatever. Uh, for more Techie Tips, see Scotty's Tech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.